Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another video. Now today we're going to be some testing on my new MacBook M1 Pro but using Cinema 4D. And Cinema 4D is a program that I used to love and use all the time. And I'm just kind of revisiting a few of the images that I've, I've done in my past from my portfolio. I'm just sort of flicking through it. Now it's nice to go back to some of these actually. Now that was done even with uh, Atlantis many years ago, that particular image. But all of the others you're seeing are Cinema 4D. Now, I remember rendering some of these out, and honestly, the animations were taking 24 hours to do. And now, uh, with my new M1 Pro, I'm thinking about getting back into Cinema 4D again, because I love the control that you get and the rendering quality. I mean, it's different to twin motion in terms of real-time rendering, but the quality of the renderings you get is very, very good. So it does mean that I've revived my love of Cinema 4D, and I'm starting to really enjoy using it again. Now I've got my new M1 Pro. And with the fast processing I've got, I can do some lovely, lovely rendering. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and please subscribe if you're new around here. I look forward to seeing you join me in the channel shortly. Enjoy the video. Bye-bye. And today we're going to be doing a quick test of Cinema 4D on the new M1 MacBook Pro. So you can see I've just opened it up. I'm using Cinema 4D R21. That's the latest version that I currently have. So uh, by far from optimised and obviously running under Rosetta at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just pop into my content browser. Um, and if you go to the content browser, you'll notice there's lots of different sort of demo scenes that you can load up, which is really cool. And I'm looking under the rendering scenes here. I'm just going to load up um, one of these. I like this one here, the quiet room. Double click that one and load it up. So first impressions are, you know, super speedy for navigating around. And there's no problem here in terms of kind of moving around, zooming in and out, super fast and rotation. So as you would expect on Cinema 4D, not a problem. So let's go ahead and hit the render view. Um, so Command R, hit render, off we go. Now you can see it's already pretty much done. Um, so rendering using the CPU. So very, very quick indeed. And if I move my CPU dialogues across, just so I dock these over here, you get a bit of a clue as to actually what's going on while we use the software. So I'm just gonna kind of move around a bit more. Let's just sort of rotate the view tiny bit more and zoom in I think here okay so let's do another render test watch what happens when I click command R it's going to kind of start the rendering process using the uh, irradiance uh, cache prepass and wow that's pretty good lovely lovely quality image rendered in um, seven seconds and you can see you know the CPU barely touched and the GPU really not maxed out at all so let's load in another scene and see how this looks. Let's go for something a little bit more complicated this time. Uh, let's try this one. So this looks pretty complicated. Haven't rendered this one before. So first time, let's click Command R. Not quite sure how this is gonna render. Um, you can see the different sort of render progress down here. Let's just see what kind of rendering style now. They see the processors are totally maxing out now. Um, so they're fully ramped up. Now do remember the M1 Pro and the M1 Max have exactly the same processors. So you won't get any speed benefit at all by going for the Max over the Pro. Uh, what you do get is obviously the 32 core GPU with the Max version. Now it doesn't look like my GPU is really doing a lot. So with this kind of rendering, it's all CPU based and it won't make a lot of difference on the M1 Pro or the Max. Um, what you can see is that the cores, all 10 of them, are really going for it now. You can really notice the efficiency cores. Those are primarily the ones that kind of start the work. And it tends to bring in the other cores when it needs to. Um, I've been testing other software and it often really doesn't get beyond sort of four or five cores. Um, rarely does it even use seven, eight, and nine, and 10. But you can see this bit of software is obviously maxing out to render those. So I'll be interested to see what the render style is for this image, um, but it does look really nice already, and it's kind of coming along quite a nice rate. Now the good thing is, with the M1 Pro, um, if you want to, you can kind of go and do some other work. So let's say I want to go and do some web browsing. Uh, let's have a quick look at my uh, YouTube channel, <laughs> of course, and see how my new videos are coming on. So if you are interested, I've done a nice video on the M1 Pro on Vectorworks already. It's a nice little video there. And we've also got some nice tests on twin motion as well. 
there's another one there. And so far, some really successful testing. And I've got some great tips for you on how to optimize your software as you're going through the process. Um, so if you do need to optimize a bit more, then let me know and I'll talk about that. OK, so what we'll do, let's just pop back into Cinema 4D. You can see the GPU actually kicked in probably more, if anything, while I was doing a bit of web browsing. But in the background, it's just happily rendering away. Well, everybody, the image is finished rendering. You can see it looks absolutely glorious with loads of detail, lots of beautiful reflections, caustics, all sorts going on. And it only took 24 minutes on this amazing new laptop. OK, so we're going to go ahead and open one more scene from the Contact Manager. And a really nice little tip is you can slide up this slider here to make the previews really nice and big, actually. And you get a really good impression of what the views are. We're looking in the uh, example scenes that come with Cinema 4D. And this is nice because all of you should be able to do some testing on these if you want to. So we're going to open up this sidewalk scene. Um, it will take a second to load in. You'll notice the first thing it does is loads the scene. And then after that, it will load all the materials. And it looks like some really nice high quality materials in this particular scene. Um, so this is quite exciting. Now you'll notice that if you do try and move the camera, you won't be able to um, because on the camera there's a protection tag. So if we click on the protection tag, we can just unlock uh, some of those attributes there. So this might be quite fun if you just want to adjust the position of the scene. So it's a really useful thing, actually, the protection tag. But let's see how we can sort of now move and just rotate that scene a little bit just to adjust the view. OK, so let's go ahead and start rendering the view. Let's go to Render, Command-R and start that rendering process. Now you can see the very first thing it does is the light mapping pre-pass down in the bottom left corner, and that's pretty quick. That's the pre-pass. Secondly, we get onto the irradiance cache pre-pass, and there's basically three passes it does. So each one refines and gets a bit more detailed. But each one actually is really fast. And then we're on to the main rendering. And look at the speed of those render buckets. Absolutely amazing. This is like the fastest rendering I've ever seen on my Mac. Um, I've got a 12-core PC, and to be honest, I think it's as fast or maybe faster than that. And maybe I should do some testing against my, my PC as well. But, you know, the great thing is we're rendering on a laptop. It's completely silent as we're doing it. And, you know, already you've got to the point where you can kind of like say, no, the rendering's not quite right. I can cancel that and go again. So that's a really big consideration. You don't have to render the whole image. You can kind of just get to the point of, um, you know, deciding whether the lighting's right or the depth of field or the camera view. And then you can kind of quit out and just re-render again. And the thing about 3D rendering, as you know, you always end up rendering multiple images. Never do you get it right first time. It often takes 10, 15, renders to get the perfect rendering. I mean, sometimes you do it in less, but there we go. That looks absolutely spot on. Really nice quality rendering. And let's have a look at the final image. So I really do love the quality of Cinema 4D renderings. They're absolutely gorgeous and so detailed. There's so much control over the lighting and the detail and the textures and materials. It's a wonderful program. So next, we're going to take a look at a test from Vectorworks. So Vectorworks is my chosen program for design. I've been using my whole career. Absolutely love it for all sorts of architectural work. It's absolutely amazing for urban design as well. And you can see this is a project I worked on with Nick Kuhn Architect uh, for a big master plan down at Canary Wharf. In fact, if I zoom out a bit, you can see here is Canary Wharf over here, this building here. And um, basically, we were looking at the master plan for the whole next section. Now, this is actually really interesting because it's been adopted now and there's some wonderful buildings there. But it was done years ago in Vectorworks, I think back in about 2005. OK, so let's go for it. Let's go and export the model to Cinema 4D. Uh, you can see we've got the native Cinema 4D uh, built in here. I could also go to Send to Cinema 4D, but it doesn't really matter which one I do. Let's export it. and. So we'll kind of save that to our specific location where we're making our little bit of content here today. Let's just export that. You can see lightning fast. So now we're in Cinema 4D and what we're going to do is go new project. So basically we can just open actually um, because when Cinema 4D you can basically just open up the files as long as they will import. And there it is. It's of course a Cinema, Cinema 4D file. Now amazingly for that size of model it's only 9 megabytes which is pretty stunning. And there it is already. Now it's not going to look too great so far. Um, we haven't done any lighting or anything. We'll pop into edit render settings. And the very first thing I'm going to want to do, you can see the ambient occlusion was there, in fact, is add an effect. 
And we're just going to go to the global, global illumination effect here. Now in the global illumination settings, there is a lot of different settings here. To keep it really nice and simple, we can just go for default settings, maybe go for exterior preview mode. Let's try that one to begin with. And you can fiddle around with all the different levels of settings in here, but I think let's just go for that new material. Let's go for it. New uh, standard material, I think. Let's just try a white standard material. Then what I'm going to do is select all the other materials here. Let's just do this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go basically and select the material texture tags of all those objects. So basically that selects all the geometry, all the various tags in my model. And what I can now do is right click and simply apply like a white card over the top. Okay, so we did, looks like we did select the water, that's not a problem. Let's do that again. So select material tags of objects, right click, apply. Okay, so now we've just got a completely sort of white card type model, um, and you can see. Now if I did want to, I could just go down to the landscape, and it looks like here is my water. So if I do want to, I could just basically delete that tag there, and hopefully if I can get onto this extrude here, See if I can select it, there it is. It should be this tag here, hopefully. Let's delete that one and we've got our water back. Okay, so let's go for a render now. And by the way, if you click the mouse middle button as I just did, that sort of zaps you into multi-views, which of course is a really nice aspect for Cinema 4D. If you click H, you're gonna fit to the viewport in each one. And basically that will kind of help you fit to where the model is as well. Okay, so let's go back into this main view and maximize that. And I just want to kind of pan that across a tiny bit into a slightly different position. And that looks really nice. So just before we render, we're going to do a few final touches. We're going to add some water from the load preset materials, liquid, and then water shader. We can drag that directly into the viewport onto our water object, and that will apply. Okay, and then what we'll do next is we'll just pop up and add a physical sky after we've had a quick check of the rendering settings. So edit render settings. We'll just check we've got ambient occlusion on. We've got the global illumination turned on. Let's go for it. Let's add a sky or physical sky. In fact, I'm going to go for the physical sky because that comes with sort of ready-made lighting and so on as well. Now, if you do want to, you can load in preset with things like weathers and things, uh, but just be aware things like those clouds and uh, the bluey tint will actually tinge the image somewhat. So if we just render away with the physical sky, but with no um, skies, cloud or weather, we'll get a really nice sort of white rendering coming in. You can see the lovely reflections of the water there, and you can see how fast this is rendering. It's pretty zippy. Um, so there we go. We've got a really nice rendering in just a few seconds from Cinema 4D using our Vectorworks model as a sort of white card rendering. Um, I love these kind of renderings and I know most architects absolutely love them too. So I'm really happy with this rendering, but I just want to show you one final nice tip before we finish off this video. And just want to show you a nice little tip. If you go to interactive render region, then what you get is a box that you can actually click and move around and resize. And what you're going to notice is that that box will immediately render with the interactive rendering, and it's very, very fast. Okay, you can actually slide the quality with this tiny little widget here. So if you take it down, lower, it will render faster. And if you take it higher, you'll see it's a bit anti-aliased, is a bit low. If you take it a bit higher, it will go a bit quicker, um, sorry, a bit slower. However, what I was going to show you was, what's really nice is you can open up the render settings and have that side by side. And for example, you can play around with things like the samples and the gamma. So I'm just going to make that twice as bright, the gamma. You can see that rendering immediately gets a lot lighter. So that looks really, really nice. Getting a bit more bright now. Uh, let's just do a tiny bit more, 2.5, and just preview that in real time almost. Um, so the faster your processor, the faster your GPU or CPU, uh, CPU mainly, this will make a big difference. So great little tip on the interactive renderer. When we're ready, of course, we can also render to the picture viewer. Uh, if you do want to do that, just make sure you go to save and have a quick look at the output settings that you've actually got here. So at the moment, I'm just basically saving a TIFF file, haven't given it a specific location. And if we go to output, now I can actually choose my different output sizes. So let's go for standard 1920 by 120. And all I do to render that is hit Shift R. Okay, so Shift R will render to the picture viewer. 
Um, the picture view is going to render away and you can kind of zoom in and zoom out while it's rendering. It might take a bit longer but this will be a better quality render ultimately. So we'll have a look at this in a second. should be nice and bright and it should look really really good. So all in a few minutes work we can create these gorgeous white card models. So I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I am look forward to doing a lot more testing on my new MacBook Pro with uh, different 3D rendering software as well. So I look forward to you um, subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks ever so much for watching everybody and let's round off with a look at the final render.